and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't wait to share with you. I've got an incredible guest here with us today. Not just 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 an ordinary guest. I mean, none of them are ordinary, but they're inspiring leaders and whatnot. But Jason's an author, and you have got to grab a copy of this book. It is just an incredible, powerful story. If you're in the multifamily industry, this should be required reading of every single individual in the multifamily industry. I'm not not a hyperbole. This is this is a great book. Uh, we're gonna put the link to Jason's. Oh, I gave it away, guys. We're gonna put a link to his um, his book, his website in the show notes. But y'all give it up for Jason K. Thank you very much. I can I can hear the applause. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The virtual we applause. Give, we're going to have to give them a moment. Let the, the crowd die down a minute before we get started. But, uh, you know, Jason, I'm I'm a fan of yours. Just, you know, the book alone is is, is a huge thing. Congratulations on that. Um, but I love, I want to give you a chance. I'm oh, sorry. I'm just excited to connect with you. So this is like, you've got me all discombobulated. I'm amped up too. I mean, I, I want to jump in, but I'm, I'm letting you do your thing. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Hey, I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Gary. And first of all, I'm a big fan of yours as well. So thank you for having me on. Um, really excited to, to have this conversation. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I have been in the multifamily industry since 2005. Uh, I've held all um, office on property positions from leasing on up to a manager. I've worked at the corporate level as a regional and as a director of learning and development. Uh, I'm currently on the vendor side with a software provider where I'm the director of onboarding and enablement. So in the learning space um, and my whole career, I've always been on the front lines of businesses. I've always been either a customer facing employee or I've led customer facing teams. And so really my passion lies in those customer facing individuals because in my experience, they completely define the customer's experience with a company. And if you can win at that level, everything else can fall in line uh, without a problem. So that's me. I was born and raised in the city of Chicago. Uh, I lived there for most of my adult life and moved down to Texas oh, about 13, 14 years ago. Um, we had, uh, I was living in Chicago. My wife and I had twins little expensive there so we decided to move down to texas where it's a little less expensive maybe not so much anymore but at the time it was um and here we are so yeah and like you said i've recently released a book my first book ever um journey to a rainforest team culture which is based on my experiences leading teams in the multifamily space and so to your point if you are a property manager get your hands on this uh it's gonna help shortcut some some long nights for you Man, and I'll add to it. If you're if you're a property manager, at least consultant, system manager, regional manager, district manager, CEO, grab this book. It's yeah. pretty awesome. You're gonna recognize yourself in there. And and that's the cool part. Yeah. That that is the cool part. It's kind of a scary part. It's a little eerie. It's like Jason was there. Jason <laughs> was there. <laughs> Well, Jason, you know, I love to connect with inspiring leaders and just peek behind the curtain to figure out what inspires these inspiring leaders. And so I reached out to you and I asked, I was like, hey, Jason, what inspires you? You sent back three great notes and I can't wait to dig into these and unpack what, why these things inspire you. So we'll jump right into it. So Jason, the first thing that you shared with me, which is kind of an interesting one is art. Not not a guy not a guy named Art, but Art in of itself <laughs> inspires you. So, share with us what is Art and why does this inspire you? So, I have always been um, a storyteller. Um, even when I was young, I used to. And it shows my age a little bit. My my folks had one of those giant camcorder cameras. <laughs> um, my brother and I would make movies with our star wars action figures and and then intercut like us having dialogue like if you know star wars at all there's the return of the jedi rancor monster and so i'd like shoot up at the rancor monster as we like made growling noises and then we'd look up in the sky and so storytelling was like wow. always a thing for me and so as i got older i became involved in theater um, which opened my eyes to all different mediums of theater which then led to more um, investment in music and then art like paintings. And what I found was these different 
forms of expression not only allow you to let things that are inside of you out into the world in different forms, but it also gives you a glimpse into other people and how they're experiencing the world or life or relationships or pain or joy. And so you can tell stories in so many different ways, photographs, paintings, um, what you're doing now in a way is a form of art, right? You're exploring the human element and allowing people to share. So for me, art has always been a source of, of inspiration. Oh my gosh. I love it. First to kind of get to the, the initial point, you creating videos with the rank, rank, rancor monster and just doing all the angles. You have to post that somewhere online. I think it's lost. It was on a VHS oh. tape and <laughs> was like, I don't know, at this point, 35, 40 years ago. So it may be lost to time, um, but maybe you your could... version of mentally is better than the actual oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> If you can find it, we all need to watch that. If I find it, I'll post it. All right. <laughs> but I love how you talk about just expressing your your yourself through art and 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 i love how you've done it through storytelling i, I believe the art of storytelling is is it's not a common art that a lot of people can do and are good at and i really believe you've done such an incredible job of the art of storytelling in the book and I know you and I were chatting a little earlier that I, I've, I've read through some of the book and, you know, it's great story. I'm, I feel like I'm there in the story and I'm placing myself in that office as the conversations are being held. And then you got to a point where like, here's the lessons. And I'm like, you just you you did this expression of art and and creating a story that you can actually place yourself in. And then at the end of it, you're like, you just learned something. I thought that was absolutely brilliant the way you did that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, when I was thinking about writing the book, doing it in story format was important with me. Being someone who directed stage plays in Chicago, who's done some playwriting in the past, but to be able to invest yourself in a good character so the the lead character her name is eliza hawkins and to be able to live eliza's journey either right beside her or in her shoes was really important to me mm -hmm. because as frontline leaders as leaders in general sometimes you don't feel like the books you read tell your exact story and so i wanted this to be a vehicle for you to get in buckle your seatbelt, and off you go I love it. I love it. And that kind of brings us because I thought this is a very unique way to 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 write a book, to share stories, share lessons. And that leads us into the second inspiration point that you shared with me is innovation. So I really think what you did with this book was very innovative, even even though storytelling is an, it was one of the oldest art forms. But I think you were very innovative in the way that you presented the books. But and, and you share that innovation inspires you. So tell us a little bit more unpack what innovation means for you and how that inspires you um how can we do things differently how can we do things more um to have more of an impact or more efficiently right technology innovation the way we go about things there's so much clawing for our attention right now that mm -hmm. it can be a little bit challenging so changing up things like so uh, for example I'm going to a trade show at the end of the month and I thought, well, I'm gonna to need to get myself some business cards. But I saw this really cool ad that popped up on Instagram and it was for a dot card. And instead of a traditional business card, I went to a website, I loaded all of my contact information and if you and I were to meet, I'd be able to tap your phone, it would bring up this page you would have the option to save my contact information to get my LinkedIn, my Instagram, my Facebook, my phone number, my website, just like that. And I'm like, that is awesome innovation that is gonna save me time, it's good for the environment. Like, it just feels like progress. Now, not everything works, but I do kind of get excited about when people think outside the box or how can we make this new or better or different. Yeah, I, and I love that. And that, the innovation part for me is exciting. And I love how you were you were very excited about that dot card. 
Yeah. And just simply because it's it's a different way of thinking of of the traditional business card because that's the way we've always done it. So let's keep doing it that way. But here you are, you're you're being innovative, you're thinking differently and coming up with something that's pretty cool. Trying. Trying. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And it is true. And it and you know, and I think that's that is pretty inspiring to just to to be aware of what's out there, what is new, what is different, how can I, you know, tag along or be a part of it or innovate myself. I think you that that yeah, it is pretty inspiring. So, and in my current role as um, director of onboarding and enablement, you know, as with every company, you're asked to do more, to have a bigger impact, to do it quicker and more efficiently or, or a higher quality. And so when you look at technologies that can help you shortcut some of the, some of the arduous work, right? Yeah. If you can use an AI app to take your PowerPoint script and turn it into a facilitator guide in 30 seconds, as opposed to a human taking an hour to type it and format it. Why wouldn't you do that? It, it doesn't like some people say it feels a little bit like cheating. To me, it feels like now I have a bunch more time to do something else <laughs> to continue that journey. Exactly. It's just the tools. The, the innovation creates tools that you can use to better your your world, uh, yourself, your environment, and the things that you do. So I love that. Yeah. And, and so Jason, in a, and I imagine these things, art, innovation brings you something special. And that brings us to our, sec our third point that you shared with me is joy. Joy, yeah. joy inspires you? Joy absolutely <laughs> inspires me. I... So you are a joyful guy. I'm always drawn to your posts that I see, your videos. Um, people who are typically happy, smiling, seem to enjoy their life. And that's not to say I definitely have my down days. I definitely, you know, console and consult people who are, are having it rough. But laughter, oh my gosh. But at, one of the people who inspired me most in my life was my father. He was always quick with a joke quick with a one-liner um, and he kind of passed that on to me a little bit. So that's kind of how I bring joy into the world. And and going back to the Instagram um, story about Dot, those reels that I go through, pe seeing people be creative and expressing themselves in these extraordinarily humorous ways, I'm guilty of, of doing that where I send them to my kids over and over again and they're like, dad, stop sending me the reels. And I'm like, <laughs> but it's so funny. At one point, Gary, one night I was upstairs in my bed and I felt like every video I was looking at was making me laugh. And I sent it to my kid and my son just yells from downstairs, I can hear you laughing while you send me. <laughs> and that just made me laugh even more. Oh, of um, course. Yeah, that, that joy that people who, who, enjoy, who look like they're enjoying their life, who go on an experience and are really not just going through the motions of going through an experience, but are actually absorbing it and you can tell or they're making memories and yeah joy is um is a huge motivator for me and it's always mm -hmm. something i try to get back to when you do kind of go on the down slopes of life mm -hmm. that's always that beacon to get back to that place where you feel enriched uh, uh, and you can enjoy every moment i love that i love it two things that kind of jumped out at me one is number one is the dad jokes i mean once you become a father you become a dad and that is obligatory that you have to share dad jokes. And you know, if that that's the Instagram reels, then so be it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's an important part. Yeah, no, they, um, they, they think my dad jokes are atrocious yet they still enjoy them. <laughs> and they also going back to the joy, I, wherever I go, I'm the one who initiates the conversation. It's the checkout person at the grocery store. It's the waiter or waitress. I'm always the one who's like, no, I'm gonna make their day. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? There you go. How's your day going? My kids always ask me, do you know them? I'm like, no. They're like, why are you talking to them like that? I'm like, why not? They're gonna have to stand here all day. And I, and I stand in line and I see people ahead of me both have their heads down. They do the exchange and they move on. Why yeah. wouldn't you take that moment to just bring a little bit of joy to their life and say hi? Uh, Jason, you are you are so speaking my language. What you just shared resonates with me deeply because what what you talked about or, or is, in my perspective are two things. One is a transactional moment where it's the people in line with their head down, missing out on 
the moment, missing out on the opportunity to do something different. What, what you create, what you do, Jason, is you create transformational moments. It's simple. It can be as simple as talking to the waiter, the waitress, talking to the cashier, asking them how they're doing, smiling, bringing them energy. That creates a moment. And what you're doing, Jason, my dad did it to me, and I, I'm hoping I'm doing it to my, for my kids as well, is you're setting an example that we don't have to be transactional in all the moments. We have an opportunity to not only choose joy, but to share joy with the people around us. And what that does is creates just a better environment all the way around. And now our kids are watching us do these things. Yeah. And your efforts, your dad's ef efforts are now yours. And your efforts will eventually compound into your kids' efforts and it'll just continue to grow. And it's just, it's an amazing thing when you're transformational, you bring joy and you create more than what just that moment is in of itself. Yeah, it's, it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes addictive. Um, you <laughs> feel just as good about life having left that relationship, even if it was a 30 second relationship, better than you left it, better yeah. than you found it. Oh, I love that. I love it. So true. And it is a multiplier of energy just by a simple transformational moment. I love it. I love that you do that, Jason. Everything you shared with me, it just, just resonated so deeply with me. And I, we've, we've come to the end of our time, Jason. It's just been an absolute joy to connect with you. You, I love what you're doing. I so love your book. We're going to put a link to Jason's website on the show notes. So make sure you guys go to his website, grab a copy of the book, Make this required reading, even if you're not in the multifamily industry, this is a great book with some valuable lessons contained within it. So grab a copy of that. Before we wrap up, Jason, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. Um, closing thought. Uh, as you step through your day to day, mm -hmm. I want everyone to remember to be intentional about what it is you do and how you share yourself with the world. Um, we all go through struggles. We all have things that we don't share on our work calls or with our kids or with our spouses. We all have something going on. And so as you go through life, be intentional about how you show up in those relationships, what you share, how you engage. Um, and when you're intentional, you'll find oftentimes more good comes to you than bad. And you put out more good than you do bad. Oh my gosh, that is so good. The intentionality of the things that you think, speak, and act. Jason, this has been a wonderful episode. Thank you so much, guys. You make sure y'all rewatch a little bit of this episode. Jason's got some great gold nuggets in there that uh, will just transform your day. If you just kind of like let some of the things that Jason shared with you resonate, I promise you money back guarantee you're going to have a better day. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Go follow Jason on LinkedIn. Go check out his website. Grab a copy of his book. It's amazing. And we will see you on the next episode. Thank you all.